All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving our praises and glory to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, whom the world ignorantly called God, through His Son, Yahweh Shah, whom the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, and through the Holy Spirit, through Kal Kadash. All right, so Kahala Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah, by Hashem Rikal Kadash, double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone that rule well, whom receive the truth from through the Spirit and power of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shah. And shalom to the brothers that's laboring in this gospel and truth and in sincerity. This is part thumb coming back with another lesson through the spirit. And in this lesson, I want to talk about the deliverance of the nation of Israel. All right, via chariots through our Lord Yahweh Shah, whom Mashiach, whom the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. All right, the Israelites consist of you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, if you didn't know. And our Lord Yahweh Shah, through, through, through the commandment of his father, is going to come back on the chariots, all right, what the world ignorantly call UFOs, to deliver the true believers, all right, and the true worshipers that have faith in these words, man, all right? The elect, which the elect starts with the 144,000 men, that's the governing body of the nation of Israel, all right, which which are preaching the word out on the highways and the byways, putting up these lessons and giving the understanding of this word, all right? And the elect also consists of the helpers, all right, of the of the ministry, which are going to believe and have faith on the words that the prophets are preaching, all right? Those are, those are the elect that are going to be delivered by Allah, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, when he make his return in the midst of World War Three, all right? Right before the, these nuclear missiles that they're gathering together, this technology that they've made, all right, the warheads, the Most High is going to deliver us out of the fire, man. All right, Lord willing, uh, I'm a part of that number. That's why I say us, Lord willing, I'm a part of that elect, all right? That's our hope. That our hope is that we are the elect and that we do get be a part of the first fruits that make it, all right, on the first go round. Because all the Israelites will make it into the kingdom of heaven, all right. But how much more glorious it is to make it on the first go round, all right, just because of your obedience, man. That's what the Lord is looking for. So let's get into the scriptures, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. This is Acts chapter 1, verse 6. It says, when they therefore were come together, this is talking about the disciples, which became apostles of the Heavenly Father, were well, of Yahweh Shah, right? They asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore the kingdom kingdom to Israel? So the so this tells us a couple of things, that the, uh, the apostles, the disciples knew that the kingdom was for the Israelites only, all right, which the Israelites you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and African Americans will rule the planet Earth with the law, statutes, and commandments of their Heavenly Father, man. All right? Rule the Earth in righteousness and have dominion over the other nations. Right now, that table has been switched to where the other nations, starting with Esau, have dominion over us. But the Most High is coming to deliver us from our enemies, man. All right? Yahweh Shai is coming to deliver us from our enemies. Okay. Verse seven, it says, and he said unto them, right. And another thing that scripture tell us is that the mindset that the apostles had, the disciples of Yahweh Shai had, the same mindset we ought to be in today, man, of looking for the kingdom to be returned back to Israel, looking for our Lord Yahweh Shai to make his return. All right, and how do you look? You get into these scriptures, all right? You watch for the prophecy to come to pass, all right? You cry to the Heavenly Father, ask him to Baba Kusha, come back, all right? Baba Kusha, meaning please. Verse 7, it says that he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. So it's not given unto you, don't worry about it, all right? It's not given unto you to know the times or the seasons, all right, the exact date that he's coming back. Of course, we have um, 
we have the prophecies to let us know, all right, that we in the last days, but that exact date we have no we have no idea. Verse eight, it says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the utmost parts of the earth. And that's been fulfilled through the preaching of the word today, man. All right. The main carrier of that word being preached is the internet, man. All right. The word has reached the four corners of the earth through the internet. All right. Verse 9. And it says, And when he had spoken these things, while they while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh Shah, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So the angels told the disciples, which became apostles, Yahweh Shah, the Lord and Savior is coming back in a chariot. As he left, he's coming back in a chariot. It say cloud. We know these to be chariots. How do we know these to be the chariots, the vehicles of the Heavenly Father, which are the vehicles of Israel? Through the precept, man. All right? That's how we get the understanding of these prophecies. You have to go get your precepts, all right? What's up with your precepts? That's what Christians always fail to do, man. These these Christians in these harlot houses, all right, these church goers on Sunday, they don't understand what's going on. They don't understand prophecy. They don't deal with prophecy, all right? They don't understand nothing, man, because they don't deal with these precepts, all right? They just pull one thing which they feel like uh, suits their emotions, and they run with it, man, all right? This is Jeremiah 4 and 13. It says, Behold, he shall come up as clouds, and his chariot shall be as whirlwind, as a whirlwind. All right? So the scripture is telling us, Look, our Lord said, Behold, shy is coming with clouds, and his chariots shall be as a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles, warm to us, for we are small. All right? Another precept that come to mind is Isaiah Isaiah 66 and 15, all right? Isaiah 66 and 15, it says, For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. Now, was Yahweh coming back himself? No. Yahweh is sending his son, all right? He's sending his son, all right, for the deliverance and to also send that fire, man, which that fire is going to, come through the nuclear warheads and through the mouth of the chariots, okay? It says, For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. So our Lord Yahweh Shah is not coming back to love the whole world, but yet he's coming to judge and to and to uh, give out uh, his anger, man. Why? Because the wickedness that's done. All right? Two-thirds of the nation of Israel are going to be destroyed, man. All right? And the other heathen nations are through, man. All right? It's going to get caught up in the fire. Not everybody's going to get caught up in the fire because, according to prophecy, we're going to have slaves and we're gonna, it's going to be a first crop of slaves. All right? Which is going to be the other nations. We're going to take them to the land, and they're going to be our slaves, man. All right? Verse 16, it says, For for by fire and and by his sword will Yahweh plead with all flesh, and the slain of Yahweh shall be many. All right? So these chariots not only coming to save the nation of Israel, it's also coming to uh, set on fire the nation of Israel. All right? Two-thirds, that is, the wicked of our people. All right? And Fire is coming for the other nations as well, man. All right? Mainly Esau, Edom. All right? Got to highlight that nigga, which is the so-called white people today. All right? So-called because they're not white, man. 
So going back to Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 13, it says, Behold, he shall come up as clouds, and his chariot shall be as a whirlwind. His horses are swifter than eagles. Woe unto us, for we are spoiled. O Jerusalem, which Jerusalem is a people before us a place, man. All right? Jerusalem, talking to you Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. All right? It says, O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. So you need to repent, man, and wash yourself from wickedness. How do you wash yourself? What's the cleaning agent? All right? What's that bar of soap to get the filthiness out for you? The word. All right? How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? Vain thoughts, man. All right? Let the scriptures do the washing. That's how you going to get saved. All right? We talking about salvation. This is John 15 and 3. It says, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. All right? So the, the previous scripture said, get out of the uh, the vain thoughts. How do you get them out? By getting these scriptures inside of you, getting the understanding of these scriptures, all right, inside of you, man. All right? So uh, go back to Jeremiah 4 and 14, it says, O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. So how do you wash your heart, meaning your mind, all right, from wickedness? By getting into the word, all right? By letting the word clean you up, all right? And that's only going to happen through faith. It says that thou mayest be saved. Saved from what? Saved from that fire. All right, how long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee, man? So how long will the vain thoughts lodge within thee, man? Be in your mind, all right? Let it all go, man. If it don't line up with the scriptures, then it ain't right, all right? So let's get into another precept, all right, of our Lord Yahweh Shah coming on them chariots. This is Revelation chapter 1. In verse 7, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. They also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, I'm, I'm on. All right? So it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, which that's reincarnation right there. All right? It says, And all the kindred of the earth shall well. I thought, according to the Christian church, all the nations of the earth, or all the kindreds of the earth, shall be in, in, in a joyous mood. Because the Christians don't have the answers, and they're a bunch of liars, man. And that's just true, man. All right? The kindreds of the earth going well because the Most High is sending his son back for war, man. For war and, f and to set righteousness back on the planet Earth, man. All right? In order... To set up righteousness, you got to take out wickedness, all right? And the, and the world was given into the hands of the wicked, Esau, Edom. So, Yahweh Shai has to is going to come back and take out Esau, Edom, man, all right? So, let's get a quick precept on that. Our Lord Yahweh Shai is coming to take out Esau, Edom. This is Revelation chapter um, 12. And let's see. 7. And it says, And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought in his angels. Now that's a now that's a mystery right there. All right. If you don't know the scriptures, that's a mystery. The dragon is the Roman Empire, and the Roman Empire is back today. Um, back today, all right, in the form of NATO and the EU, and America is part of NATO. NATO, 
which are all Edomite nations. All right. So there was war in heaven when Allah Yahweh come back with the angels. All right. And on the chariots, then these Edomites. All right. And they allies going to fight against the heavenly father. Man, well, against the heavenly father's son and the angels. That's why it says Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. All right. He saw Edom in his whole power structure. And, and the dragon fought in his angels. So the angels that he saw Edom are what? His military, man. All right. He's going to use that air force and try to fight against it, <laughs> against Yahweh Shah, which they're going to fail terribly, man. Verse 8, it says, And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. That heaven is a condition, which is his rulership. All right, he's going to be taken out of power, man. By Allah, Yahweh Shah. Let's get Revelation. Let's see. Let me see if I want to get this. So, this is Revelation 19 and 11. You know, so it's so like I'm getting the precepts that's popping, you know, in my head. This is Revelation 19, 19 and 11. And it says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And that white horse represent cherry, all right? Horse represent power, and white represent righteousness, okay? And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, all right? This is Yahweh Shah. And in righteousness, he did judge and make war. So the Most High is going, Yahweh Shah is going to make war with other nations in righteousness, all right? Because they wicked, man, all right? Righteousness is going to be set back on the planet again. Thwadi Habashim Yahweh Shah, man. He's going to be forced on the planet again. Verse 12, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. All right. He had many crowns on his head. All right. Because he's coming to take down all these different uh, nations and their rulership, man. All right. Crown represents rulership. All right. And who's the main ruler in power today? The so called white man. All right. That's undeniable, man. You can't deny that. All right. His true nationality is Esau Edom, which he uh, tries to hide. All right. But he's being revealed, man. All right. It says, and he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. All right. And that's talking about his his position in his rank. All right. Yahweh Shai is above all. All right. Under his father, Yahweh, of course. Verse 13, it says, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the word of the heavenly father. All right. So now we know this is talking about Yahweh Shah and his vesture dipped in blood. It's not actual blood, all right? He's not going to have actual blood on his garment, but it just represents a lot of death, all right? The scripture said the slain of the Lord should be many, Isaiah 66. Okay, so verse 14, it says, In the armies which were in heaven follow upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So the armies... Are the angels in their chariots, man. All right. They followed Yahweh Shah. All right. Verse 15, it says, And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. The mouth is the chariots. All right. We're going to get a precept on that. Out of the mouth go a sharp sword. The sharp sword is those concentrated, the concentrated laser beams. All right. Are going to come out from the chariot. All right. Like you see in your movies. It's going to, that's, that's close, all right? It's a close depiction, okay? It says that with it, he should smite the nations. That's why the earth is going to mourn because Yahweh Shai and the angels come to smite the nations. It says, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. Going to rule over them. I mean, he's going to have slaves, all right? He's going to have people under subjection. And he traded the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of the Almighty. All right? So this is a quick precept. 
I'm gonna get one more precept after this. We are calling in, folks. This is Second Ezra, chapter thirteen, in verse one. It said, and it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. So this Ezra is having dreams, all right? Actual visions. These prophecies that's going to happen in the future. Verse 2, and lo, there arose a wind from the sea that had moved all the way thereof. And behold, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. What is thousands of heaven? We just read the precept that the angels going to be following our Lord Yahweh Shah. And when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. Why did they tremble? Right? Why did everything tremble? Because it's going to be a terrible, <laughs> terrible sight. Man, the world not ready for this, man. All right? Lord, we not ready for this. But Lord willing, put the spirit upon him, his men, to be able to handle these things, man. All right? Because it's going to be a, a power ain't never seen before, man. All right? The Lord ain't with you in that day. You gonna just, <laughs> you gonna people gonna be dropping dead, man. All right. But of course, the Most High gonna hold people up so they can taste of that fire. All right. Verse four it says, and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth fill it when it fill it to fire. All right. So I wanna get the precept again back in uh. Revelation 19, and let's see what verse that was. <laughs> right, in 15 it says, And out of his mouth go a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. So now this is the precept. Second Ezra 13 and 4, it says, And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth fill it when it fill it to fire. All right. The scriptures are also call them right aiming thunderbolt. All right. In Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, 12, it says, Then shall the right aiming thunderbolts go abroad and from the clouds, all right, from the chariots. As from a well drawn bow shall they fly to their mark. All right, so Yahweh Shai and the angels going to be shooting uh, them laser beams, man. Right, them right aiming thunderbolts. So, uh, and this all has part to do with the deliverance, man. We, before we get on them chariots, it's going to be some uh, destruction going on, man. All right, destruction going to be going on. The... The fucking warheads are going to be flying, all right? The scriptures say all the America is going to be destroyed in an hour, man, all right? So all these things are going to be happening quickly, okay? So this is um, verse, verse 4. It says, And once over the voice went out of his mouth, all they burnt that heard his voice. Like as the earth fill it when it fill it to fire. And after this I beheld and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heavens to subdue that man that came out of the sea. And we read the precept, um, Revelation 19 is a beautiful precept showing you that the nations are going to, going to come together in alliance to fight against Yahweh Shah to subdue that man that came out of the sea. All right, the sea is talking about the skies with the clouds, man. All right, with the actual clouds showing you that's the war that's going to be in heaven. All right, verse 6, it says, But I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. All right, so Israel thought it was a mountain, right? He says, But I would have seen a region, a place where out the hill was graven, and I could not. So it wasn't actually a mountain. All right, it was an actual chariot, but it was so big, all right? It was so big like a mountain. So this is how the everybody's going to see Yahweh shot when he come back. All right, he's going he's going to be a, in a big chariot, all right? 
verse 8, it says, and after, and after this, I beheld, and lo, all they which gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid in your durst fight. So the Most High going to put the spirit in these different nations and their armies to come against Yahweh Shah. All right? They're going to be scared, you know, but the Most High going to make them fight. All right? Dramatics, baby. Verse 9, it says, And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude, of the, of the multitude that came, he need to lift it up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight. <laughs> hey, our lawyer, how was shut? He ain't coming back for peace, man. All right. It says, and burnt them up every one, so that upon a certain of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. Yo, it is crazy, man. Yahweh Shah is going to be taking. These nations out, man, our enemies, man. All right? Let's get a quick precept. This is Luke 1 and 68. It says, so I started 67. Get a little bit un more understanding. All right? And this, this is verse 67. It says, and his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied. So this is a prophecy, man. All right, saying, "Blessed be the Lord, the Lord God of Israel, not of any other nation, but of Israel, for He hath visited and redeemed His people." All right, so we read about the physical redemption. All right, this is verse sixty-nine, and has raised up an horn of salvation for us in the house of His servant David. All right. Who is that? Yahweh Shah. And he spake by the mouth of his holy, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. And we reading about that salvation. All right. Yahweh Shah is coming, man. All right. So what manner of persons are we to be? All right. We ought to be a hey, being diligent and watching for our lawyer how we shot to come back. This is Matthew twenty uh four, twenty four and thirty. It says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Right? This is Yahweh Shah in the heavens. And then show all the tribes of the earth mourn. So we just got the precepts on that, man. Why are they going to be mourning? Because they're going to try to fight, and Yahweh Shah going to take them out, man. It says, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven, the chariot, with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now let now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branches is yet tender and put it forth leaves, ye know that the summer is not. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the door. So we know. Is near because these prophecies are speaking, man. All right. So, Lord, 